Howdy folks, and welcome to part 3 of my Electrical Ace tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about something that most of y'all are interested in, batteries. Now for starters, you have your cost-oriented battery. He's the basic building block of this mod, as he's used to craft most other batteries. He has a nominal voltage of 50 volts, nominal power of 250 watts, that can store 60 kilojoules worth of energy. Next you have a capacity-oriented battery. He can store a lot more energy, 240 kilojoules, but at a cost of only being able to provide 125 watts of power at 12 volts. This makes him good for low drain applications, like lighting systems or emergency backup power. On the other hand, the current oriented battery is great for high drain applications, giving that he has 1000 watts of power. He only has 40 kilojoules of energy though, meaning that you can't run him for a long time. This is similar to an automotive battery, and coincidentally he looks kind of similar, in that an automotive battery is designed to start your vehicle, after that the engine takes over. If you run the battery for a long amount of time, or keep cranking your car, you know that it ends up with a dead battery. Next you have a voltage oriented battery. Other than having 200 volts, he has the same properties as a cost oriented battery. He's good though because with the extra voltage you can have less batteries in line, which makes them good for, say, compact areas, or if you want to get to a high voltage really quick. Next, you have a life-oriented battery. He has the same electrical statistics as a cost-oriented battery, except he's hardier and lasts longer. We'll talk about battery life later on. Finally, you have a single-use battery. As the name implies, once he's used it up, he's dead. He does, however, have a higher power output, and higher energy storage than the cost oriented battery, which makes him useful in some applications such as maybe a faraway base or power that you very very rarely use. Now all this talk about energy and power and stuff and it's kind of confusing, so it might be easier to think of it in physical terms. Here we have three tanks representing three different types of batteries. The tank on the left represents the cost oriented battery, the tank on the middle represents the current oriented battery, and the tank on the right represents the capacity oriented battery. We can think of the total energy these guys contain as the steam inside the tanks, and as can be expected, the capacity oriented battery has more steam than the current oriented battery. Also, we can think of the power output of the batteries as the amount of steam that escapes every time we hit the button. Note that the capacity oriented battery has three pistons on the top, which means a lot more steam is going to escape every button press, and thus a lot more power is going to come out of it. As an example, the cost oriented battery has some power, while the current oriented battery lets out a lot of steam, while the capacity oriented battery lets out a little steam. In addition to a visual representation of power and energy, you can also represent voltage this way. Voltage in electricity is essentially how fast the electricity is flowing. So, a low voltage thing is like a slow moving fluid, and a high voltage thing is like a fast moving fluid. As you can see, given the same hole size, something with low voltage will give you less power or total fluid flow than something with high voltage. You can also think of power and energy in terms of a pipe, with voltage is the speed of the water flowing through it, while current is the size of the pipe. If you want to get more fluid through the pipe, you can either make the fluid flow faster, or increase the voltage, or make the pipe bigger, which is increasing the current. Either way, the total amount of energy you get at the end of the day, or the total amount of water you get at the end of the day, is equal to the types of properties of voltage and current or, in our first tutorial, P equals IV, or power equals current times voltage. It's nifty how this applies in real life. So, speaking of energy, let's charge up a battery. As we can see, this little 50 volt battery here needs some energy. So, I've set this voltage source to 50 volts. Let's get him charging. Although he's discharging. Why is this? Well, it turns out the battery is actually 50.2 volts. Remember, 50 volts is the nominal voltage of the battery, 
or in general the voltage that it tends to hover around. A fully charged battery will be higher than 50 volts, while an empty battery obviously will be 0 volts. Since the battery is 50.2 volts and its voltage source is 50 volts, by the rule of electricity it flows from high voltage to low voltage, or the battery drains. So let's just make this voltage source higher. Something like 55 probably ought to do it. Uh-oh, we're overloading the battery's power limits. We know what happens when we overload stuff in electrical age. Yep, it ends with a bang. So, how can we fix this situation? First of all, let's get another battery down. Since 55 volts was too high, let's try something like uh, 53 or so. As we can see here, this is at the upper limit of its power rate and slowly decreasing, so we shouldn't have any problems with explosions. Note, though, that due to the high charging rate, the life is decreasing. Battery life is affected by how many times you charge it and discharge it, and the rate at which you charge it and discharge it. If you charge batteries really quickly, they're going to lose their life really quickly. Something you should probably consider if you need to keep those resources. So, let's talk about, though, why the battery exploded. The thing is, voltage sources will provide an infinite amount of current, or power, in order to keep the voltage at that value. So, when I set the voltage source to 55 volts, it said to the battery, you're going to be 55 volts. Well, since the battery was 52 volts, to be at 55 it would have to be nearly full. So the voltage source outputted tons of power to the battery. And, as you can tell, that didn't go too well. This situation, though, you probably won't encounter too much in building your circuits, simply because I'm going to assume you aren't going to be building them with voltage sources. Let's go look at a more practical example. This guy right here. Here I have two batteries connected to a turbine, with a little voltage probe in the middle. Turning the turbine on will cause it to produce electricity and charge the batteries. The voltage probe here is the key, though. This guy lets you to set a voltage depending on whatever your money is running through. So, right now, it's connected to a signal cable to the furnace, and the signal cable actually lets you control the level of the furnace. This guy says, at 55 volts, produce a 0% output. This means that if this cable reaches 55 volts, produce a 0% output on this signal cable, and shut the furnace down. Which is what we want, as we know the batteries explode when subjected to 55 volts. It also says, at 52 volts, produce a 100% output. This means that if the voltage drops to 52 volts or lower, make this signal 100% and kick the furnace on full blast. This has the effect of keeping the voltage on this line between 52 and 55 volts providing a nice charging rate for the battery. If you want to adjust this charging rate, like lower the power so the life doesn't get reduced as much, you can actually adjust this setting here. So instead of being between 52 volts and 55 volts, it can between be between 51 volts and 55 volts. The wider range at the lower voltage means that it will tend to keep a little bit lower, and so the power in gets reduced. Really, this is one of the best ways to regulate your power systems, as too high a voltage leads to exploding batteries. Another interesting thing about batteries, and one that we don't usually talk about, is grounding. Now, not many of the other blocks in this mod use grounding, and it kind of goes unnoticed, except when you mistakenly put a grounding strap on the wrong side of a battery terminal. What grounding really means in circuits is a reference point. A battery goes and says, OK, I have a positive terminal and I have a negative terminal. Whatever is at my negative terminal and my voltage, I'm going to output on the positive terminal. So, ground nodes are automatically 0 volts by definition. This battery is 51.6 volts. So, 0 volts on the ground terminal side, or negative side, battery says, okay, 
now I need to have 51.6 volts more on this side. And so it does. You might notice though this battery over here has a negative terminal on a 51.6 volt side. So this guy has 50.9 volts, meaning that this is going to be 51.6 plus 50.9. And so it is. This is a unique feature about this mod in that you can actually connect power sources in serial in order to raise voltages. This also means that since you can have varying amounts of voltage on your power sources and conduits, you don't have to limit yourself to one type of power. So you can charge some of the parts with a 50 volt source, and you can charge some of the parts with a 200 volt source. All you're really doing is putting power in the batteries. This kind of is nifty in the fact that you don't have to have, like I said, transformers, or you can just stack them a whole bunch together. Or if you really want to get creative, you can just make an entire line of batteries and have 50 volt, 200 volt, and 800 volt pullouts. Although unless you use 200 volt batteries, this can get kind of a pain. As you can see right now, these guys are charging just fine. But since I have these voltage probes on here, this will ensure that the batteries don't charge too fast. A handy way to generate your power and kind of looks cool. Speaking of power, let's time to some use it. So, you've got this nice little uh, voltage oriented battery here and a 200 volt macerator. Kick him on. You can see he's operating at a decent 190 volts, but the battery's power output is way too high. Overloading things in electrical age, you kind of know what that's going to result in. High temperatures, stress, and eventually that. So, what can we learn about it? First of all, this guy didn't have enough power for the application. As we can see, he only provides 250 watts of power. This macerator, on the other hand, uses 400 watts of power, so we were trying to draw way too much out of the battery. This can easily be fixed by just adding a second battery. As a tutorial map says, adding batteries in parallel increases the total current output. And so, the macerator runs just fine, and none of the batteries are overloaded. Over here, you have a much more complicated setup. These are the same 200 volt batteries, and there's switches on these macerators to let me control what they are they on or off. So, switching this guy on, running from one battery, we can see that the power output is way too high. So let's switch on another battery. As you can see, the power output's equalized, because this battery doesn't have to provide it all, and so they sort of share the load. Now, what if I want to switch on another macerator? As you can see, power output was way up for those, so you have to compensate by adding more batteries to the line. Note, though, that the new battery added has a higher power output than the ones already in the system. You need to make sure of this if you're going to be charging your batteries not all at the same time. If you're using a battery, especially on a high power circuit, and you end up switching something else on, this battery here, because he's higher in charge, is going to produce more power output than the guy that's lower in charge. And if there's too much of a difference, obviously the power output's going to be too high, and you're going to get an explosion. Really, it's not that hard, as long as you make sure to keep all your powers down, and you can easily do this with little voltage probes. Also, you can use circuit breakers for all the lines, although on batteries, your only option is either voltage or overheat protection. Other than that, there's not too much for batteries, although the applications of them in terms of power systems we'll cover in the next tutorial, as that can get kind of complicated, as it involves cable losses, and transportation, and load leveling. That's about it, though. So, hope you all enjoyed the tutorial, and any other questions, stop by the wiki. This has been Plots, signing out.